Now that we have our rubber sheet code set up, we can start entering more interesting potential energies. For example, suppose you have a planet near two stars. We can use a loop to add their potential energies, giving us some interesting results. Notice how, even with this more complicated setup, conservation of angular momentum keeps the planet from falling into either of the two stars. Adding more stars is easy. Just enter the positions you want in the list of vectors. With the right combination of initial position and initial momentum, we can get some amazing looking results. Just keep in mind that the more stars you add, the slower the code will run, so try increasing the rate value. Try out the rubber sheet visualization with an arrangement of stars that you like and see what motion results. When you study the motion of a charged object, it's helpful to work with the electric potential it experiences. Electric potential, which is more or less the same thing as voltage, is the potential energy per electric charge, so it's very easy to extend our potential energy code to instead work with electric potential. All we have to do is calculate the gradient of the electric potential using the same procedure as before, then multiply by the charge. One of the most important ways in which the electric force is different from gravity is that the electric force can be repulsive. So in our list of charges, we're storing the charge, positive or negative, in the Y component. Now our rubber sheet represents the electric potential landscape, which has both hills and valleys representing attraction and repulsion. Since our moving particle is positively charged like a proton, it moves toward the valleys and away from the hills. However, if we make our moving particle negatively charged like an electron, it moves toward hills and away from valleys. 